attack. You are used to uh, the Steinitz or Taros uh, approach that if you have an advantage, you must attack. And that is correct. But there is something you need to know too. Sometimes an attack is more or less certain to win the game if it happens. So sometimes you need patience to make the attack go through. So today there is a lesson you can learn that will win you many games if you have a problem with this. Uh, sort of you get too impatient when you're attacking. Uh, and I'm trying, I will try to, to create some rules for how to conduct the attack in an orderly manner. So uh, the game we're going to see is very, very new. It was played yesterday in the German Bundesliga that has started again. And there was, a, by the way, a, a nice uh, gesture uh, when two Ukrainian players couldn't uh, couldn't uh, make it, and uh, and they just uh, left out the board and said it was okay not to have these games played, and because they would have lost without a fight. Uh, and they seem they are fighting a lot in Ukraine at the moment, in this very sad uh, story for the world. Um, and for the piece, I'm gonna make a little uh, speak at the end of the game uh, to address the situation. Anyway, the, this is Jaime uh, Santos La Taza. Uh, I don't know how to see that. Say this in Spanish. Uh, my Spanish accent is even worse than my English accent, and uh, I cannot speak Spanish. And he's playing against René Stern, uh, G solid German player who's always gotten around 2,500. And it's always interesting to see because he doesn't make big mistakes. He only makes small mistakes so it's it's always nice to see how he loses <laughs> sorry Rene. Uh, anyway this is uh, the Italian or after this move so it's the quiet Italian and uh, it's something I know a lot about uh, it's um, it's sort of a way to get a Spanish like middle game uh, without all the sidelines in the Spanish and especially not the Berlin right okay C3. And, uh, and this is basically uh, the difference between white and black is that uh, white has a pawn here and black has a knight here. Uh, and what does that mean? That means this knight is a little bit uh, clumsy. And uh, sometimes it can be put to good use, but in general it is misplaced in front of the pawn here. Uh, and uh, it's also a little bit, you could say, uh, dominated by this pawn that takes away the squares for the knight in the center. Um, you would like to have this knight here instead. A5. And that's uh, the, the modern way of playing with black. You try to take uh, space. Uh, the, the sort of uh, the, the, this dynamics with the pawns on, on the queen side is very interesting. Uh, in the uh, earlier, black always played A6. Um, and, and we had this, and White found out that instead of playing Bishop B3 uh, here, he could um, he could just play A4 and keep the Bishop on B C4 and getting some space on the Queen side. So that was a big discovery in this opening. And then Black started to say, why should I play A6? Why not A5? Uh, and uh, and this is where it currently is. But the problem is, of course, that it does create some weaknesses on the queen side uh, so maybe uh, black, white can use that um, if black plays uh, white plays a4 now he has misunderstood something in my view but i've seen that anand and players like that have done that so maybe it's not so bad anyway rook e1 is uh, then the natural move uh, getting the rook uh, influence in the center white is preparing uh, d4 and also preparing uh, this maneuver here, getting the queen, the, bishop, the knight near the king and, um, and now out of the way of the, the queen side. A3, avoiding uh, anything with uh, bishop d4 or knight g4. So, yeah, he's not going to play knight g4. That would be a mistake. So, h6, uh, avoiding the pin here, uh, which can be a little bit annoying, and also avoiding any knight d5, so you can always play rook e8. Knight b2, d2, rook e8, all standard stuff, bishop a7, uh, 
moving away before it's attacked by the pawn. Knight here, bishop e6, and, and black is, is doing all uh, the standard stuff. This cannot be wrong, I guess. Bishop b5, and that's uh, sort of the downside to the a5 move. Uh, the bishop suddenly can, can, can go to this Spanish square. Uh, black goes back as well, uh, and, and here comes an interesting move, bishop a4. Um, so the bishop is ready to uh, to go back here, where it's often hiding, waiting uh, for for the good times where it can join the king side attack. And that is um, White's general plan is to to play d4, establish some kind of a space advantage, and then attacks Black's king. Black is trying to get counterplay in the center, and especially he would like to play d5 and and sort of get the overhand in, in uh, the center. Knight e7, like we said, the knight on c6 is not very well placed. Bishop c2, knight e6. Um, so they both have uh, knights here, and black does have knight here, uh, which are well well placed in, 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 the, in those squares. Uh, they can jump to a lot of squares near the opponent queen. But okay, white is the first to get the party started with d4. A4, and this is of course interesting. Um, sometimes or often, white will be able to uh, switch back to this diagonal to attack the black king. But with the pawn on a4, black is getting some space on the king uh, queen side. Bishop e3, and also um, this is 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 an is an interesting move uh, and very standard. Uh, basically, white is maybe getting ready for this. And taking here, and that's often very, very, very dangerous for black when uh, when this this sacrifice is possible. Bishop c6 and uh, putting more pressure on the e file, and black uh, of course hope for this something like this because then the king side attack is not going to happen. Uh, white needs his space in the center to to make that sort of shift to the king side. Queen d2, following the plan and connecting the rooks, which you always like, and maybe threatening here. Actually, something like uh, this is also coming uh, after take, so so it's it, it does look a little bit dangerous for black at the moment. And But what about the e-pawn? So, because in general, white would like to take back, but in this situation, e4 is simply hanging. It's simply hanging, so he has to take back with the bishop. But that's also kind of common uh, that you take back with a piece. And the thing is, white does have more space in this situation. He simply does have more space and some attacking chances. And and uh, if, for instance, it's something like this, then uh, white is is clearly better. He has a mobile center and great chances to attack Black's king. So Black needs to do something. Uh, he would love uh, to, to, to take this, this one and, uh, and destroy the pawn center. And also, uh, he's actually, uh, you can't take because then after take back, there is uh, this problem. Mm hmm. And you, of course, don't want to take with the with the bishop because uh, then white, black will have the bishop pair, and they will be very strong. These bishop, so knight has to go. But that also frees the f pawn here to to join the attack. And uh, this knight is not well at the moment; it's not doing much, but it will get back to the game, or 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 it can even go to uh, to f3 at some point. So it's just waiting here, and this is uh, sort of. The point of this video is that uh, white is having a natural born attack in this position. He is, uh, he's got all these pieces here pointing towards the king, and he's got more space, and he's got a mobile uh, pawns able to join the attack. So all he needs to do is not to mess it up. So uh, it's a little bit like uh, the the end game maxim: do not rush. When you have an advantage, you just need 
for the game to go uh, as you expected in a natural way and that will lead to a strong kingside attack for white um, and and the way uh, Shame uh, Santos Lantasha does this is 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 quite impressive. That's also why I chose chose this game. He's a he's a very talented uh, Spanish player. I think he will be a top player soon. Uh, so he's going back, uh, and and this is probably uh, the the problem for for René Stern is often he plays a little bit too passively. He had to find I don't know how, how to play this, but he had to find something active. Uh, and f4 and uh, white of, of course is 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 clearly for choice here uh, he has um, much more space and uh, and great attack and chances of course it helped black a little bit that the bishop got exchanged but white has more than enough firepower and the knight came back into the game uh, okay so we see here that white is uh, is probably already threatening this and queen d3 and uh, and, and probably uh, bad things could happen to to this guy down here that is the weakness in black's position because his structure is so sort of fine and and so on uh, but but he does have white does have a winning long term uh, positional or attacking advantage Rook a5 um, makes a lot of sense. Cover all these squares that are the problem uh, and prevents e5. So e5 is prevented for now. Rook a d1 just not uh, uh, just developing, uh, showing restraint. How to uh, to sort of it is clear that white is 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 planning to get this pawn going at some point and and start uh, open for for this bishop but he needs to be patient and this is very hard especially for uh, for inexperienced players or or club players or even ims it's it's very difficult to know when you have a sort of because white is 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 clearly understanding chess very well he understands that Okay, if I don't mess this up, uh, my 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 attack will land. So I just have to look at whatever counterplay Black is 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 trying to create and prevent it. And then in the end, e5 will land and Black will die. And this is basically the plan. King h2. One more uh, prophylactic move, getting out of the way. There was a check here. Um, by the way, this is something you often see, you saw in, in Kasparov's game. He was very good at, uh, at just uh, getting the king out of the way. Really saying, and here comes another uh, nice little uh, move that uh, is, is prophylactic or just preventing all sorts of counterplay. So the bishop was undefended now it's def now it's defended oh well it was defended by the queen but it's nice to have it here um it's also covering this pawn that so it's, it doesn't get lost something with queen c4 or something and maybe white is even preparing this move uh getting ready for for the e5 push and then after take take, take something like take you could take on uh on d7 maybe something like that bishop c8 Oh, queen c2 so e5 is is looming uh, king f8 uh, so black's king is trying to run away from uh, the check <laughs> it's he's, he's making a houdini and uh, say oh let's run uh, but the problem for for black of course is there is not with this structure white's king here is extremely safe uh, there's no chance that it will ha have any kind of trouble but black's king there's no real safe space here and just to make sure there is no safe space white plays b4 uh, and and one of the idea is is uh, of course to harass the rook here so um, he will take take and 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 this could be 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 happening uh, soon and then the rook will run out of squares so rook c5, um, preventing b4, still uh, keeping an eye on this square with a lot of pieces and a pawn. 
uh, but in the end queen b2 is eyeing this and uh, getting ready to push the pawn getting out of the pin right b4 the queen is still uh, in some uh, but it's not nice to have this situation and and so it happened he got the rook out and here comes so white has been doing a lot of things here he put the bishop here he even pushed the pawn he put the king on h2 uh, and so on and now finally he's ready here comes the attack so how bad is it well it is bad because this guy down here has got no safe where to go and the queen is coming in with it a sacrifice but it's of course not a real sacrifice because uh, after this uh, black is more or less uh, falsely false mate um, white has and that's also why uh, these let's just go back these two knights here are so uh, strong when you're attacking because they control every square that is within what Ogord will kill, call the kill zone. So here comes the knight and black is finished. You can try something, but of course it's, it's not good enough and uh, you cannot survive here. The problem for white, of course, is, is that now his king is, is, is a little bit unsafe, but at the moment he can just uh, cover it like this. And or this way and bishop h7 trying to win the knight and winning the knight and check rook a2 Ooh. and queen h4 it's i think it's a false mate here after this move by the way um the other move is mismet by rook d8 and i think it's mate in seven uh, so white is well it's just that something like this is well it's just mating right um this one is coming and so on uh so it's it's a totally winning attack so after 97 uh rene stern uh, resigned the game so this was very instructive white kept he knew he had a winning attack in the making but it needed patient all we need is just a little more patience as guns and roses said it um and uh well the the world of chess is uh is yeah it's a disaster because uh, ukraine and uh, russia are two of uh, the strongest and most important countries in chess and uh, russia is right now uh, attacking ukraine i don't know what the aim of this uh, operation is is if to take a crane and make it russian uh, it it seems in these days it seems crazy to have these kind of imperialistic ideas uh, and i don't think uh, it's was well thought through by mr Vladimir Putin. Uh, I don't know. Even if he takes to Ukraine, what then? What you got a population of forty-three million people who don't, who don't they, they 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 don't want to be part of Russia. So they, then they would have moved to Russia, even if they are Russian speaking. So it's, it makes makes no sense. It's it's very sad and it's feel uh, very dangerous. And uh, the world order is sort of. Uh, extremely disturbed uh, by by this uh, and, and what about well ukraine is uh, the reigning european champions it's it's just it's just insane um it reminds me a little bit of a story uh about how how the end game is going to be how how this is going to play out uh, uh, when the, the they was at the time where the cold war was at its darkest and uh, Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. By the way, if you only are interested in chess, you can skip this. Um, it's, it's just a little uh, funny story. Uh, anyway, uh, you, Gorbachev and Reagan met in uh, some sort of a cabin out in the woods in, in some forest in, in the US. And um, and somehow they they were kind of almost alone. Uh, most of the the higher ranking uh, people were, were were not in the in the room. And um, and Reagan uh, found a way to uh, 
to talk to Gorbachev that made uh, things easier. He said to, uh, to, to, to Gorbachev, uh, Mr. Gorbachev, if we were attacked by, um, by aliens, um, would you help us? And Gorbachev, he, he was thinking a little bit and said, uh, after some time, yes, yes, we would. Uh, and and uh, Reagan said, well, we would help you too. And after that, uh, the the sort of uh, people, the de-escalating uh, started and, and all these uh, different uh, uh, programs to, to end uh, the, the threat of nuclear war was was successful and and the people was a more safe place after that. And, and I don't know if you can reach Mr. Vladimir Putin this way. I don't think so. It doesn't.